Have you ever been to your local pharmacy and not been able to get the medicines that you need? Trust me, I know how frustrating this is. Have you ever thought though that there might be more issues going on in a pharmacy than a customer can see? Hi, I'm Hannah Anderson and I'm a clerk at Hartsville Pharmacy. Most people that come in and can't get the medicines they need when they want them are pretty hateful and rude. However, through this speech, I want to make you aware of the different things that go on in a pharmacy and how you can help. First, let's take a look at the problems your pharmacist might face. This is where I work in Hartsville, Tennessee. Here's our website, here's the outside of our building, and here is me counting some medicine. Pharmacists face issues such as supply chain issues and the DIR fees. According to Pharmacists Advancing Healthcare, in 2022, there were 160 new drug shortages to 114 in 2021. That's 46 new drug shortages compared to last year. If this number continues to grow, there's no telling how many drug shortages could be going on in the coming years. Not only are getting drugs the issue, administering them is too. Parwana Saha, who is the Associate Director of Inpatient Services for Penn Presbyterian Medical Center says, the volume of shortages is extreme. It used to be one or two here and there, and we manage it. But now every day there's a different one. She continues by saying that shortages are worsened by not having critical supplies to administer the medicines, such as IV bags and needles. Here are some drugs that are on nationwide back order. Amoxicillin is a children's antibiotic. Ozempic is used for diabetes and weight loss. Ibuterol sulfate is used to treat asthma and bronchitis. And BCG is a very powerful chemotherapy drug for bladder cancer. Now that we have covered how pharmacists can't receive drugs because of the supply chain issues, let's take a deeper look into the DIR fees. DIR fees are direct memorization fees that affect chain, local, and specialty pharmacies. These fees cost the pharmacies great sums of money. The fees limit what drugs the pharmacies can order and gain a profit from. The pharmacy I work at is a locally owned and operated pharmacy, therefore it does not have the funding such as chain pharmacies like Walgreens or CVS. They are struggling to pay a high drug prices anyways and the attempt fee charges for Medicare cause major issues. Pharmacists have worked heroically throughout the pandemic, so to have insurance middlemen push so many small business owners to the edge is so troubling. Insurance companies are charging extreme copay amounts for the customer and giving the pharmacies less profit. Local pharmacies are good for a small town, and negative things such as DRR fees make it hard to stay open. This statistic is shocking from the Washington Post. From 2003 to 2018, 1,200 of the nation's 7,624 independent rural pharmacies closed. If this continues to grow, where are we going to be able to go to get the drugs that we need? Air pharmacists are very conscious when um, running a prescription. Most of the times, the number in the red is higher, so therefore they have to look very closely when trying to run that. I'm, a very, I'm aware of many prescriptions that come through that we lose a lot of money on. However, we continue to pay those fees and hopefully we make it up in the long run. In conclusion, I hope you have learned that pharmacies are striving to serve patients any way possible. However, there are many issues such as the fees and nationwide shortages that make it very difficult. Thank you.